Hey folks, today we're going to set up and fly an LPV approach in the G4 SP. Now the first thing to remember is that an LPV and a G4 is set up and flown exactly as you would fly an ILS. Today we're going to be doing the RNAV GPS Yankee to runway 19. So if it's flown just like an ILS, what does that mean? Well, it means you need to load the approach, preview the course, and set the MDA. The only difference is that you have to press the LPV enable button and that is right over here, right underneath the six pack. When you press that on, a green light will illuminate. When you press it on the left side, it'll also illuminate on the right side. You can turn it on and off from either side. Turn it on from the right side, it'll turn on on the left side. Turn it off on the left side, and it'll be off on the right side. So let's take a look at the approach. It's going to be the RNAV GPS runway 19 at Teterboro, like I said. Look at the WAS box. WAS stands for Wide Area Augmentation System. This uses GPS and ground-based facilities to determine a highly accurate aircraft position. Now, the WAS box shows a channel. You must verify this channel in the FMS. So what does it say? Channel 97736. And then you see W-19-Alpha. What does that mean? Well, the W stands for WAS, obviously. 19 stands for the runway we're flying to. And Alpha means it's the first WAS approach to this runway. All right, so let's enter the approach into the box. We're gonna go nav, arrival, select runway 19. Gonna select RNAV Yankee to 19. We can do it off a of strad as a transition. There will be no star and we'll hit arrival. Before you activate it, verify that everything is in there that you want. We're going to Teterboro. We're going to be going to runway 19. We're going to be doing the RNAV Yankee off of Strad, and it's going to be an LPV. Now notice the 97736. Does that match up to what the chart says? Yes, it does. We have the W19 Alpha, and we have the W19 Alpha. When you're done with that, you can activate it by doing this. We'll say yes. Let's go direct to Nippy at this time. So we'll go direct, Nippy, we'll press LNAV, and we're on our way. I would also note that you want to take out any localizer frequency that happens to be in the radios. So let's just put a different frequency in there. We'll use uh, Teterboro VOR. So we got uh, in radio number one, 108.4. And that's 108.4 and on radio 2 we want to do the same thing so we'll go TEB and we'll put it in the right hand radio and now we have the VOR frequency and we're not going to confuse any localizer frequency so now we have to set up the approach how do we do that the same way you set up an ILS display controller go to nav preview select nav 1 if on the left side nav 2 if it's on the right side and enter the course the course is 195 so we're going to enter 195 and after we do that we will press return and preview will box we'll do the same thing on the right side so we're going to hit uh, nav 2 195 that is set we'll hit return and we have preview on the right side. The next thing we do is we go to the flight ref page. The minimum we said was 250, so we're gonna open up the MDA box, open it up, set 250, 250, and then box it. It will also show MDA in white down here, which is exactly what we want. We're gonna do the same thing on the right side. So how do we actually fly this thing? Pretty simple. We're within the airport area, so I'm gonna press LPV enabled. Now the LPV is enabled. Bring the scale in a little bit. We're on our way to Unville. I said we fly this just like an ILS, correct? So we're going to assume that we're cleared for the approach. I'm gonna start configuring the airplane here while we do that. And if we're clear for the approach, I always like to select 
the approach button on when I'm within about three miles of my course and heading toward my course. So we're almost already there. So what I'll do, I'm gonna enable approach now. There's approach, and what do you see? The same thing you'd see on an ILS. Localizer, glide slope, we're at 2,000 feet, which is where we wanna be. LPV switch is enabled. You might also wanna put that on a checklist. Make sure that the LPV switch is enabled within the airport area. And after you land, make sure you turn the LPV switch off, because if you don't shut the airplane down, it's going to stay on the whole time. If you shut the airplane down and come back, it'll be off. So you don't want to get caught with that switch on when you really don't want it. You might be flying on ILS at the next airport you go to. So make sure that switch is off when it's supposed to be off and on when it's supposed to be on. All right, where are we? We're coming up on Unville. There's our localizer. We see localizer in white and we want it to capture. Let's watch that. It's smart turning us, and it captures. It goes right from blue needle to green needle, just like an ILS. Notice localizer is captured, it's in green, and glide slope is still in white. When the glide slope is captured, that'll turn green as well, and it's flown, like I said, just like an ILS. Simple and easy. Let's configure a little more. Put down some flaps. Let's drop the gear. Speeds are good. Auto speeds are showing. All right. Full flaps down. Warning inhibit is on. All the checklists have been completed. We're not going to obviously be doing a landing here. I just want to show you how this works. And we're looking good. The box properly sequences. We flew LNAV to our point. We armed the approach. We saw localizer and glide slope in white. It intercepted the localizer just like an ILS would. And we're waiting on the glide slope to capture. Here it comes. And bam. Glide slope captured. We'll set missed approach altitude of 3,000. And we're on our way to Teterboro, which is way out there. That's how you do an LPV approach. Just like an ILS. Remember, after landing, Turn the LPV switch off. Now, if you turn it off in the air, look what happens. Everything goes away. Check nav source. Select the LPV switch. Oh, it's even telling us, hey, we're an idiot. Select an LPV switch. Oh, we'll select it back on, see if everything comes back. Not until we arm approach. We arm the approach. Got localizer and glide slope. Wow, somehow it still captured. Imagine that. It's kind of neat how that worked though, isn't it? Turn it off and the whole thing goes away. And obviously it goes away because we did a smart thing by not entering any localizer frequency in here. That's a VOR frequency.